Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing cholera toxin and pertussis toxin. Okay, so we've discussed that cholera toxin and pertussis toxin are going to add these nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide molecules, with one exception. Uh, they're going to remove the nicotinamide molecules, okay? Uh, but they'll add the rest of it onto uh, alpha subunits of heterotrimeric G proteins. So let's now discuss this in more detail. Okay, so I'll get temporarily a new piece of paper, but we'll, we'll come back to our structure, don't worry. I'm not drawing that out again. Right, okay, so basically let's begin with cholera toxin, CTX. What does it do? Well, basically, its targets are the alpha subunits within the G-alpha-S family of alpha subunits of heterotrimeric G proteins. So it targets G-alpha-S itself and also G-alpha-OLF. Okay, so let's suppose that we have a heterotrimeric G protein, which could be in the inactive state at the moment. Okay, so here it is. And the alpha subunit of this heterotrimeric G protein is either alpha S or it's alpha OLF. Okay, so here is the alpha subunit, and it's one of these two. Okay, remember there are many different splice variants of G alpha S. Okay, and let's say it's currently in the inactive state, so it currently has GDP bound, so it also has this beta gamma subunit here. And like so, which will also have a lipid moiety anchoring it into uh, the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bimer. Okay, so basically what cholera toxin is going to do is it's going to take one of these NAD molecules, okay, and it's going to rip off the nicotinamide and it, of the NAD molecule, and it will bind the rest of the NAD molecule. And let's think about what the rest of the NAD molecule is. So if you remove the nicotinamide, you have got adenine with ribose. Now, the combined name for adenine and, strictly speaking, I should call that beta-D-ribofurinose, but everyone just calls that ribose, okay? The name for adenine plus ribose is to call it adenosine, okay? And then we've got two phosphate groups on there, so we could call this adenosine diphosphate, or ADP. Okay, now what does the ADP then have attached onto the final phosphate group, this beta-phosphate over here as it's called, um, well, it has a ribose, a beta-D-ribofurinose, so we could call this an ADP ribozyle molecule. Okay, and we're going to stick it onto something, so it's going to be an ADP ribosyl group that we're going to stick onto something. This is why people say that cholera toxin ADP ribosylates um, the G alpha S and G alpha OLF uh, subunits of heterotrimeric G proteins. So we are basically going to rip off the nicotinamide, we're going to bind the ADP ribosyl group onto the alpha subunit, okay? Um, so, which amino acid are we actually going to add it onto? We're going to add it onto an arginine amino acid in these G-alpha-S and G-alpha-OLF uh, G-alpha subunits. Okay, so let me now show you the structure of arginine, and then I'll show you how we're actually going to transfer the ADP ribosyl group onto the arginine. Okay, so I'll draw the arginine as though it's a residue within a protein, because of course it actually is within the um, alpha subunit, which is a protein. So here's the amino group, here's the alpha carbon with a hydrogen coming off it, and here's the carboxylic acid group. And basically, the R group of arginine consists of firstly three methylene groups, and I'll put one methylene group, I'll bracket this, and then put a subscript three, to uh, imply that you should repeat this three times, okay? So because I don't want to have to draw out three methylene groups, I've used this convenient trick. Maybe it's a little in vain here, because I only have three of them, but it's a useful trick nevertheless. Then we have an amino group following that, and then a carbon off this nitrogen. Then we have off this carbon an amino group, and then finally a double bond to a nitrogen, which then has a single hydrogen coming off. So this is the structure of the amino acid arginine, okay? Now basically what you are going to do is you're going to take one of these hydrogens off this nitrogen on the amino group. So if I just draw the amino group out in full, 
here is the amino group shown in a little bit more detail okay and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off one of those hydrogens off that nitrogen okay so I'll send one electron back to the nitrogen I'll send one electron back to the hydrogen here okay then what I'm going to do is I am going to cut this bond between the carbon and the nitrogen here okay so I'm going to cut that bond there and again you can imagine sending one electron back to each of the members okay now I want to stress that I'm not showing you an electronic mechanism I am showing you a um, logical progression to understand how the things on one side add up to the things on the other side I'm not showing you the electronic mechanism by which this occurs okay so and you can imagine sending one electron back to this carbon and one back to that nitrogen okay that will mean that this nitrogen maintains its positive charge because it really now has lost the electron to the carbon okay and the carbon remains neutral okay then what we will do is if I bring my arginine which unfortunately isn't in a convenient position okay if I bind this nitrogen which has a free electron to this carbon here which also has a free electron that's how I'm going to add this ADP ribosyl group onto the arginine then what I'll do is I'll bind this hydrogen which has a free electron to this nitrogen which has a free electron and that nitrogen will maintain a positive charge and that will create me a molecule of nicotinamide which just has a proton associated with its uh, lone pair of electrons here okay so it's just a protonated nicotinamide molecule okay so that's how I'm going to transfer the ADP ribosyl group onto uh, the arginine amino acid residue within this alpha uh, S or alpha OLF subunit okay now what does that do well basically having this ADP ribosyl group stuck off the side so let's draw it You've now I've got this bulky group stuck off the side basically in the case of the G alpha S and the G alpha OLF this does not stop the heterotrimeric G protein being activated by G protein coupled receptors. So the G protein coupled receptors will bind to the G alpha S or G alpha OLF subunit which has the ADP ribosyl group on just as well as they bound to the alpha S or alpha OLF subunit without it on. Okay, They will then activate the uh, alpha S or alpha OLF subunit to an alpha S alpha OLF at GTP subunit. Okay, so what you'll then get is if I draw the phospholipid bilayer here, you'll get the activation of this alpha S uh, alpha OLF uh, subunit, whichever one it is. Okay, so it's now got GTP bound to it, and of course it's also got the ADP ribosyl group stuck off here. Now, what does this now do? Well, basically, having the ADP ribosyl group stuck off the side of this alpha S slash alpha OLF subunit here. Okay, so I'll put that alpha S slash OLF. Um, it stops the alpha S uh, alpha OLF cleaving this GTP back into GDP. Okay, so it completely inhibits the GTPase activity of this alpha S slash alpha OLF subunit. So you will remember that for the alpha subunit to turn itself off, it has to cleave the GTP into GDP and an inorganic phosphate molecule. That's how the signal is turned off. Basically, having the ADP ribosyl group completely stops the alpha subunit from turning itself off, basically. So it will remain on now forever, basically. And uh, it will stimulate certain molecule, well, certain downstream targets far too much. For instance, adenylyl cyclase enzymes. All nine forms of adenylyl cyclase are activated by alpha S and alpha OLF subunits. And these will all start producing cyclic AMP. So cyclic AMP will go through the roof in response to uh, the cholera toxin. And I should say, what does the cholera toxin actually do? It catalyzes this addition of the ADP ribosyl group onto the alpha S and alpha OLF subunit. So this doesn't usually happen. Uh, this only happens when you've got the cholera toxin present, which will catalyze this reaction, basically. Okay, so... 
Uh, we'll call it there for this video, and in the next video we'll discuss the mechanism of action of pertussis toxin, which is very similar with one important difference.